Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's VMN Download Call with High School Sports Insider Joseph Hoyt. I am Kimmy, and I'm the Rewards Event Coordinator here at the Dallas Morning News. And on behalf of all of us, I wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. Please remember that we will have a live Q&A towards the end of the call, and we highly encourage your questions. Joe, you're welcome to take it from here. Awesome. Thank you, Kimmy. Hello, everyone. Um, as uh, Kimmy said, I'm Joseph Hoyt. Uh, you guys can call me Joe. Um, I cover high school sports for the Dallas Morning News. Um, I started as an intern in 2016 after graduating from the University of Oregon, um, and then I liked it so much that I came back two years later, um, and I've been here since November 2018. Uh, before I kind of get into what I've done, what I plan to do, um, you know, I wanted to say thank you to all of you for subscribing. Um, you know, I mean, it goes without saying that we can't do what we do without your support. Um, and, uh, you know, judging by some of the emails I get and the interactions on Twitter, I know you guys are reading, and uh, it really means a lot. So um, I always encourage people to, uh, you know, to email me. Um, I try to get to, to respond as many as I can, So, and I love just talking with people about what we do here at the Dallas Morning News. So, you know, whether it's in this Q&A session at the end of this call um, or it's uh, after the phone call is over, please, you know, feel free to connect with me on Twitter. Um, you know, you can email me, anything that you want to do. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get better at Facebook <laughs> for my own, uh, you know, professional account, so I'll be sure to update that more as well. So, yeah, kind of as Kimmy said, I'm a high school sports reporter here. And kind of, you know, I think at the Dallas Morning News, that offers a lot of variety um, and a lot of opportunity to tell some really cool stories. Um, you know, when you start getting into the college ranks, into the professional ranks, um, you know, there's, you know, stories have been already told, um, for, for, you know, about a lot of these athletes that you know of. Um, you know, there's a lot of PR restrictions on what stories can be told. But here at the high school level, it's a very kind of grassroots thing. And, you know, we're kind of telling the stories of players that you're going to know tomorrow, you know, right when they're starting out on their journey. You know, I think of, I think of two guys last year uh, that we wrote a lot about, uh, we're a Rockwall wide receiver, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and Frisco Lone Star wide receiver, Marvin Mims. You know, Jackson is now at Ohio State, and you're going to see the Big Ten open up here soon. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him do really well if you, if you followed his high school career. Um, former Rockwall head coach Ronnie Webb told me he's going to go down as the best player in Rockwall history. And, you know, when you end up third in the all-time state rankings for receiving yards, that's, you know, that kind of goes without saying. And then Marvin Mims, who happens to be a childhood friend of Jackson Smith, Najigba's, um, he was at Frisco Lone Star, and he wasn't really on the radar last year for a guy that could, you know, be go down as one of the greatest receivers in state history. And then he just had an absolutely incredible season. He broke the national record for yards in a season, um, you know, and it was just an incredible performance. Um, and ultimately, it ended up with these two, these two childhood friends almost doing a uh, – a Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle kind of thing uh, going for the record and, you know, all the way down into the playoffs and Marvin eventually, you know, got the record um, against Den Ryan. He became the all time state leader in receiving yards. And thanks to becoming the all time single season national leader in receiving yards as well. Um, you know, so, I, you know, the cool thing about high school sports is I was able to tell that story. Um, you know, you get to know these kids, um, you know, these superstars, before they really become, you know, household names. Um, you know, I told we, uh, for the first time ever, I believe, we did, we, every year for the Dallas Morning News, we do offensive players of the year for every floor, defensive players of the year, um, or, you know, whatever kind of accolades go with each of those. And uh, for the first time in my knowledge, we did a co-offensive players of the year. It was Jackson and it was Marvin. Um, and we did a photo shoot with those two. And uh, I jokingly told my high school editor, I'm like, yeah, you know, some of the you know, newspapers and other outlets are really going to love that photo in, a, you know, in four or five years when both those guys are first round picks in the NFL trap. Um, so, you know, it's cool that we're able to chronicle those things, you know, and the other cool thing about being a high school sports reporter is that, um, you know, we get to really tell the stories that kind of illustrate bigger meanings. Um, you know, I, uh, Gary Smith, a former, um, you know, Pulitzer prize winning, uh, writer for Sports Illustrated, and he did in the features category. And if you kind of if you follow follow features, Pulitzer Prize winning. I don't. I wouldn't imagine that you guys do. Um, but winning, being a sports reporter to win that award is incredibly, incredibly difficult. 
and he did it multiple times. Um, he, if you ever seen the movie Radio, um, Cuba Gooding Jr., for example, that was based on a story that he wrote. So um, Gary Smith kind of has a philosophy that, you know, when it comes to sports writing, you know, it, it's all about writing kind of what happens outside the lines. Um, you know, sports comes to us in boxes, I believe, is the exact wording he said. And he always had a, you know, willingness to break through. And that's kind of what I've modeled my, or I've tried to model my sports writing career, you know, after as well. Um, you know, I think of when, you know, I think of, when I think of high school sports, you know, oftentimes I think of resiliency and I think of adversity. These are two big terms, um, you know, that, that really are paramount in the, you know, in high school sports. And one story in particular that I, you know, wrote about was, um, a receiver named Carson Winters from Flower Mound High School. Um, just a brief synopsis of that story. He, you know, was going into, getting ready for his senior season. And if, if you have kids that play high school sports, um, you know, especially those that, you know, maybe weren't, didn't have the biggest, you know, aren't superstars, but they, they know that, you know, the senior season could be their, their final season playing organized sports, it really means a lot to them. In Carson, in a, in a summer workout about, I believe it was in April, he, uh, he took a, in a scrimmage, he took a hit, a very normal hit, and was immediately writhing in pain. And they got, um, you know, the, the trainer um, immediately knew something was wrong. They, they, they took him to the emergency room. Um, you know, he was in the hospital for, you know, a couple of days. They did, they did kind of, they, they looked inside to see, okay, what's this problem? Where is it? And they couldn't find anything. So they kept him in the hospital. And then one day he took an absolute turn for the worse, went into sepsis. And hiding deep, deep inside his body, they found this ruptured part of his intestines, essentially. And, uh it started infecting him and, you know, he almost, I mean, he almost died. And then after that, um, they saved his life. And then after that, he was in the hospital. And so this is about April, May, you know, high school football season is a couple months away. Um, because he couldn't eat at all on the stomach, he lost about 45 pounds. So you think of this, this big, you know, young man, six foot receiver who was pushing the length, length of his shirts. That's how, that's how jacked he was. Um, all of a sudden became this frail, you know, unhealthy, you know, obviously looking person. And he was, he was sick and he, he couldn't eat and he lost so much weight. So the idea in anyone else's mind, you know, he, he's not going to play high school football that season, that right? Um, instead, on a stomach that could barely even handle pad thai, <laughs> you know, it, it was painful for him. Him and his dad, you know, went to the glass window inside the hospital and they marked, they, they mapped out how many calories per day they'd have to eat in order to get back to 190 pounds for football season. And they set a date, and they, you know, it was over. It was, it was about 5,000 calories a, bl- a day, I believe. And on a, on a painful stomach, he decided to, to do it. And he started, he started walking around the hospital to build up strength, just little moments at a time. And, you know, even though his goal was months away and it, it probably didn't seem attainable at the time, he kept pushing. And ultimately – you know, he ended up being a pivotal receiver on Flower Mound's playoff team. Um, you know, he was he was he was taking hits. I, I, I covered one of his games, and I, I saw him take a hit on the side that where he had the injury, and he was cleared by the doctors. But I even cringed. I was like, Oh no! And yet he gets right back up and goes and, and gets ready for the next play. Um, so you know, when I think of being a high school sports supporter, I think of telling those stories. Um, you know, when I was an intern. I told the story of, uh, of, of a student at Keller Fossil Ridge High School named K.L. Norwood. And K.L. Was, um, had just gone viral. Um, basically, there was a quarterback at Keller Fossil Ridge named Max Aiken who, um, who uh, turned around and gave his homecoming king a crown to K.L. And K.L.'s living with cerebral palsy. Um, and so it was an amazing moment. It was, it was kind of everything high school football is about. It was, it was beautiful. There was a, a thunderous roar of just celebration coming from Keller's, you know, Keller ISD Stadium. Um, and, you know, in every headline after that, I mean, KL, you know, was on, you know, they, had, they showed on ESPN. They, he, he went, him and Max went on um, the Ellen DeGeneres show. But every headline was, you know, the star quarterback gives the homecoming king crown to the kid, you know, kid with cerebral palsy. And I was kind of just talking with people, seeing things on social media, and, and you, you see that, you no, know, Kale's more than that. He is, you know, he's a excuse me, he's a big time student at the school. Everyone loves him. He's he's a he's a great human being. He you know he's 
he's more than just a kid living with cerebral palsy. And so I ended up doing a feature on him, you know, and it's funny because he was, he played in special Olympics and he was the star quarterback <laughs> for that team. Um, you know, so it's funny, he, you know, he was so popular. He was a trainer on the, the football team. And so long story short, those are just a couple examples that I've done in my past of, of high school football, you know, being an endless opportunity in high school sports in particular. I, I've also done <laughs> other, uh, other features that don't involve football players, I promise. Um, but, you know, those are just a couple that come to mind immediately that illustrate, you know, just how transformative the high school sports beat can be to just real world elements, real world issues. Um, I wrote a feature story about the Mesquite football team a couple of years later, finally fi- finding peace in what would have been Jordan Edwards senior season, who was, who ended up, you know, he was shot and killed, um, you know, by a police officer, you know, when they were driving away from a party, the police officer was convicted you know, ultimately, this was a team that lost one of their brothers, their friends, and, you know, they finally found grief away from the national spotlight three years, three years later in what would have been Jordan's senior season. Um, so long story short, I think high school football is a great avenue to – high school sports, excuse me <laughs> – is a great avenue to just telling some incredible feature stories. Um, but, you know, one thing we also need to do is kind of, you know, tell the news and we got to, you know – be, you know, hold people accountable can, and really do good journalism. And I think that there's plenty of opportunities and plenty of examples of us doing that as well. You know, one of the things, I mean, I think if you look at the COVID-19 pandemic, one of the things I think that we've really strived to do is tell as many f- factions of the story as possible. You know, we've, we've chronicled the breaking news. We've done the day-to-day things, but we've also done features about it. You know, last week, Greg Riddle, another one of our sports editors and reporters, and I wrote a story just, hey, there's a trend now of high school football cancellations. We had over 50. When 5A and 6A schools started playing, we had over 50 cancellations. Before that, when it was only 4A and below schools playing, we had, only, we had five in total in the four weeks or five weeks before that. So we did a big feature story kind of, you know, chronicling that, talking to experts. You know, is this just a trend that we're going to have to deal with for the entire season? You know, what does it mean? Um, why is it happening? And so we did that story. But on the flip side, I also did a story the week before or two weeks before about a South Oak Cliff wide receiver named Justin Harrison. You know, he was a person that really needed high school football this season. You know, he was, you know, he came from an offense the first three years at South Oak Cliff that didn't really throw the ball often. And he's very underweight for a receiver, but he's got this electric speed. He's got great footwork. He, you know, they have such big high hopes from this year with a new passing offense. Um, and if he doesn't get a college scholarship, he can't afford to go to college. And not only would that affect him, that would affect his two sons. He's, he's the father of two twins that are now over one years old, or just one years old. Um, and so, you know, we really try, are trying to tell so many stories with that while also doing the, the day-to-day diligence of writing, hey, what players are doing really well? You know, every Friday night we write five storylines, you know, that, or five things that – five thoughts about that, those week's games. And then every Sunday I write five storylines to look forward to this week. So even though, you know, we were chronicling, you know, a pandemic, you know, one of the biggest news events that's happened in a long, long time, we're also doing our best to do the day-to-day diligence of, of highlighting players and covering high school sports like we need to do. And that's kind of, you know, been my promise to myself this season that I was going to try to tell as many stories about it and as many sides as possible. So one thing you'll get with me is, is someone that, that values what happens on the field, you know, and I'll, I'll do my best to chronicle it, but my main goal is to tell, you know, the stories that happen outside of it that fuel what happens on the field. So you see what happens on the field, and there's reasons for it, and, you know, there's stories that come from it. And I've, as Gary Smith said, you know, sports comes in boxes, and I've always tried to kind of break out of that and, and tell the stories of humans. And I believe every human has a story, especially high school sports athletes. So that's a little bit about me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm open for any questions. You know, I'd love to talk. If you want to talk, you know, which team, surprise teams are doing really well, <laughs> we can do that. If you want to talk about other features that I've done in the past, if you want to talk about story ideas for the future, I'm, one thing about me, I'm always, always open to story, li- uh, story ideas. My emails are open. My direct messages on Twitter are open. And, I, and uh, uh, honestly, a lot, of stories idea, a lot of story ideas I get come from you. Um, so if anything you guys want to talk about, I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk about. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, for those of you with a question, please follow the Q&A prompt.
In the meantime, Joe, I wanted to say th thank you so much for doing this call today. I know I appreciate it as well as do our members, I hope. Um, and for those of you with a question, I know you just heard the prompts, but please press star six to place yourself in the queue. Um, Joe, we did have a question come in in advance, and it's from Kay. And her question is, do you think COVID has hurt college recruiting for high school seniors this year, especially in the lower divisions like 4A? Mm -hmm. That's a, thank you, Kay, for the question. That's really interesting. Um, I think, you know, so ultimately um, this season happened. And for, for college recruit, I mean, for kids that are trying to get, you know, recruited, especially seniors, I mean, that's a huge, huge thing. I, I just talked about Justin Harrison, who, you know, from South Oak Cliff, who needs it. Um, you know, it's, one thing we kind of – the other thing about the pandemic is I think we're going to see a lot of effects of it years from now. Um, you know, and I think high school football is not immune to that. You know, one thing – or high school sports in general. Um, one thing that we've kind of theorized, and we really weren't able to find enough – um, evidence right now, but, you know, it's something that you know, I've been kind of asking people around and just, you know, is I wonder if, you know, because of the pandemic, um, the UIL allowed streaming services this year for the first time. Every team could stream games. So if you went to the NFHS or, you know, uh, high school sports network online, or if you went to, you know, each team's respective YouTube page, you, know, you can walk, you could sit at your couch if you're a college recruiter and watch teams play. You know, if you wanted to watch raw film of 20 guys in one night, you could. Um, and so one thing I theorized to begin with is I wonder if 4A schools and below, we're going to see a lot more recruiting coming in because of that. Um, so far, I haven't seen a lot of evidence of it, especially, you know, when they were playing, they were the only ones playing. Um, you know, I think there was a running back from Waco Connolly. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But, you know, he was a guy that hadn't had any offers yet, and he blew my mind in the first game against Sunnyvale that I attended. Um, and I, and I, for, I forgot his name, but he, he was so good. And he's a kid that I think that, you know, because 4A and below were only playing for the first couple of weeks, that college recruiters have to turn their attention to watching streams, you know, from different schools. And they might have just watched this kid, you know, that maybe hadn't been, um, you know, looked at before. So I think ultimately, um, you know, with 4A and below, I think actually we might find out that they got a recruiting boost. Uh, but I think now with, you know, 5A and 6A schools playing, um, and I think the massive amount of cancellations um, I think is definitely going to hurt uh, college recruiting, especially for seniors. I mean, ultimately, if you want to get recruited, uh, you need to, you know, it usually starts in your sophomore and junior seasons. And if you're going to do it as a senior, you really got to blow people away. Duncanville corner Ennis Rakestraw last year, you know, he was getting turned down from, uh, he was getting turned down from recruiting camps, and he had no Power 5 offers, you know, he's kind of like, you know, one of the afterthoughts in the Duncanville defense kind of going into the season. And then he didn't allow one touchdown reception the entire year. And for Duncanville, which obviously went to the state championship game, you know, he was so, so good. And next thing you know, when signing day came around, he became one of the most attractive recruits in all of college football. He was able to choose on signing day between Missouri, Alabama, and Texas. And ultimately he chose Missouri. And, you know, if you watch Missouri on Saturdays now, he's their starting corner. So, you know, I think the cancellations are really going to hurt some of these kids, unfortunately, because you need game film to show out, especially if you, you were under-recruited to begin with. But I think we may find, you, you know, a couple of years from now that some of these four, eight, you know, under-the-radar younger prospects and below um, ended up actually getting a recruiting boost because of it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, following up on that question, um, I, well, actually not the question, but a statement you made earlier, um, um, what teams are doing well in the DFW area? Yeah, no, there's some, there's a lot of, there's a lot of great, great teams. Um, so I, uh, I came, I'm from originally from just south of San Francisco, and I, you know, I played high school football, and I thought, you know, hey, our, our football is really good out there. Um, you know, and then I came to Texas, and I'm like, oh, it's another animal. <laughs> um, so you know, one team that's really, really impressed so far for me is uh, is Rockwall. Um, Rockwall. As we mentioned earlier, you know, last year they had Jackson Smith and the Jigba, who's now at Ohio State. And if you watch their games, yeah, they had a lot of other talent on their team, but Jackson was just so, so good. And on top of that, they lost Jackson, and they lost their head coach, Rodney Webb, who's now the head coach at Denton Geyer. You know, and so Rodney had built that program, and he, now he handed it off to Trey Brooks, who was, who was their offensive coordinator the year before. Now he's a first-year head coach. And Rockwell's 3-0. and 
um, you know, one thing that they returned was quarterback Brayden Locke, who was a, who was a sophomore last year, started, you know, made his debut, was, you know, was really, really good with Jackson. But another just inherent question was how was Brayden – and he earned multiple Division One offers last year. But the question was how is he going to do without one of the best receivers in Texas State history? And he's been incredible. Um, he's, he's been really good. He, I think he got offered by Wake Forest after uh, a couple of days ago. Um, and so Rockwell's 3-0, and that includes wins over that, – that includes a win over South Lake Carroll, um, who was, you know, has the number one recruit in the class of 2022 in the entire country in Quinn Ewers, the quarterback who's going to Texas, who's committed to Texas. Um, and so they, you know, Locke, excuse me, Locke beat him in a shootout 44-42 to 42 this past week. So he's really impressing me. Um, you know, Den Ryan, Den Ryan was the state runner-up in the 5A level last year, and they – you know, they were so dominant all the way up. I mean, they Frisco Lone Star was the number one team in the five in five A in the state last year, heading into the state semifinal, and Den Ryan absolutely blew them out, and it was an incredible, incredible you know performance. And you know, they seem to just have carried it over into this year. They've they beat Den Geyer in a battle for Den for the first time since 2015, I believe. Um, the two teams played. Then they also beat Arlington Martin in Week One, another six A team that is probably going to win its district and is going to have a long playoff run. And Den Ryan dominated them. And so that's another team that just has looked absolutely incredible. Um, you know, in the 4A level, Argyle, Argyle looks unstoppable. Um, you know, they're the number one team in the state. Uh, I covered their game against Waco La Vega, which, you know, was a match of the two number one teams in the, or number one and number two team in the state for 4A. Um, and it, you know, everyone expected, you know, either a close game or a shootout or, you know, would go down to the wire. And Argyle, I think, was up by three touchdowns in a pinch. And next thing you know, I mean, Argyle absolutely dominated and destroyed them as well. So that's another team at the 4A level that um, has done really well. Allen, Allen's 3-0 and or 2-0, and excuse me, and they had to cancel the last two games because of COVID reasons. But they're a team that I think could be very dangerous again. Flower Mountain Marcus has quarterback Garrett Nussmeyer, who's an LSU commit. Uh, they're three and zero, and they look extremely dangerous. Um, you know, so there, there's been there's been a lot of really good teams. The, the two Grand Prairie teams are two and zero for the first time, and I can't even remember. So <laughs> there's you know there's so many good teams out there. Um, you know that uh, that have really impressed through the first couple weeks in six A and five A and through the half the season and the four A level and below. Well, thank you, Joe. Um, this is the last call for live questions to all those on the call. So if you have a question, please press star six. Um, in the meantime, Joe, one last question related to COVID. How do you think COVID will affect the future of high school sports? Yeah, no, great question. Um, I think kind of we've seen, you know, I, I mentioned that I wrote about the trend in cancellations the last couple of weeks. Um, and I think ultimately that's something that will just be ever present throughout this season. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, I mean, if you look at, you know, teams, so teams will get COVID cases and then they'll have to cancel, but usually it's not like, you know, Baylor had, I think reported about 30, uh, 32 K, you know, cases the other day or yesterday. And it's, you're not seeing that at least, you know, according to you know, public reporting the things that have been made available, you're not seeing that at the high school level, but you're seeing, you know, two or three cases on a football team. And then you're seeing that, you know, 40 people have to quarantine because of it for 14 days you know, that they were in close contact. And obviously high school football is a sport that's a very close contact sport. You know, it's considered high risk, um, you know, by, you know, doctors, a high risk sport for COVID-19. So, you know, that's the thing is you're seeing, you know, when you have to quarantine 40 kids, you just can't put a team out there and play. Um, and if, or if you do, you know, and you're using JV players or, you know, other players, it's just not safe for some of these kids, especially, you know, maybe some who don't, have, who have no experience at the varsity level. Um, and then you also wonder, I mean, did they also come into close contact? So, you know, you're seeing, you know, one phrase that's kind of being thrown around a lot is an abundance of caution, you know, uh, you know when people are canceling due to COVID reasons. Um, and I think you're just going to be able, you're going to be seeing that through the entire rest of the season. The question that comes is what happens when playoffs <laughs> happen? You know, or, or if a team gets COVID in, you know, the first round of playoffs, um, you know, they probably are going to, I mean, there hasn't been a lot of, this is a question that we're in the store we're going we're to do later, 100%, but we don't know what's going to happen. Is it going to be a forfeit? Um, and then they're out. It's like, hey, great 10-0 season, but hey, the number one team in the state 
is now out in the first round of playoffs because they got COVID. So, you know, it's, it's something that I think is just going to be a factor through the entire football season. And then also in, into the basketball and, and spring sports as well. And, and until at least, you know, there's a vaccine that comes around that can, that can put an end to the pandemic. It's definitely a crazy year, and I'm definitely curious to see how the future is handled with all sports, not just high school alone, but um, Mm -hmm. all around the world, basically. (laughs) And, well, Joe, it seems like we don't have any other questions in the queue. Um, So to wrap this up, um, I wanted to thank you again for doing this for our members. Uh, Again, we appreciate it. And for uh, for all of you on the call, thank you so much for joining us. We are thankful for each and every one of you. And for those of you who called in early and heard our Alexa briefing, we will include information on how to subscribe to receive those on a daily basis after the call. Um, one last thing, Joe, um, do you have any closing thoughts for our listeners? Yeah, no, just as I kind of mentioned up front, thank you all. Um, you know, like I said, you know, we can't, we can't do what we do without you. Um, you know, ultimately this is a business and we appreciate your business as well. And I, I you know, if you ever need anything from me, ever have any questions, ever have any feedback, any, have any story ideas. Um, I'm very receptive to all of it. Um, you know, I love talking with readers. Um, and if you see me at a football game, you know, or at a basketball game, you know, shoot me a wave or say hi and say, Hey, I subscribe. I'd, I'd love to just talk with you. Um, and so if you ever need anything from me, you can email me at joseph.hoyt at dallasnews.com or follow me on Twitter at Joe J Hoyt or email me on or message me on Facebook too. If you search my name, Joseph Hoyt, you should, find a, a dorky looking photo of a headshot of me that, um, yep, that's me. So just, <laughs> you can send me a message there too. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Joe. Um, everyone for future demon out, download calls and other important information. Continue to check out our weekly rewards newsletter on Tuesday. So that is today. Um, again, we wanted to thank you all for joining us. If you aren't a member of the Dallas Morning News, we are glad that you were able to jump on, and we hope that you will continue to support local journalism by subscribing today. Also, tell your friends, and don't forget to vote. I hope you all stay safe and stay well. I'm signing off. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you, guys.